everybody, Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this designer inspired gift bag. I absolutely adore this. These are lovely. It all folds flat. So these are wonderful if you want to start making them now for Christmas, for example, because these will look lovely under the Christmas tree. So I've got all this decoration. I've used an embossing folder on the front. Underneath here, we have a real key. You don't have to, but, and, and again, those of you that are uh, familiar with a Birkin bag, this is where the inspirations come. But you can see here, this slides up to reveal the key. I have this padlock, which I've just snipped the side there. And then if you undo that one there, this all opens, so it's a proper working, you know, designer bag in that sense. So again, anybody that is familiar with this kind of bag style will, you know, know what to do with this. And then you've got a Velcro dot underneath there. You've got all this detail here. Now I am going to make one change, and these pieces here, actually on a real, this kind of bag that I was looking at, they actually cut, well, it's all done through leather, but it comes through this part here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it through the sides, and I did suggest that right, you know, kind of at, through the process of making this one in the live. Or you can do it the way I've got it here, because it still does work. And then inside you have your gift bag. Nice size as well, it's a really roomy gift bag. And then again, that all just comes down. You know, it looks like it's a, you know, a challenge to open, it isn't. That all closes, that folds back on and then you can put the padlock on or you can just leave it all hanging down there as well. It looks really, really nice. So let's get into the tutorial and I will show you how to make this really sweet gift bag. Okay, so a few things that I've also suggested during the live and things that you might find helpful to use during this video, some circle nesting dies to make that detail at the bottom here okay but if you do have the simply made crafts suitcase die set you can use the actual corner that they have here and that's what I, I use and I just cut it down so you know there's two options there so use that bit if you have that and then when you come to do this piece here I've used a square stitched die so you'll need some of those or just cut it yourself or if you have the Simply Made Crafts hexagon clutch bag, they actually have this piece here and here, and it will give you that effect. So rather than having a square, you'll have this shape here. And then this piece is what comes through the, the center here, but I'm gonna show you how to make that. It's very, very easy to do. If you've got a key, perfect. And if you would like to do you know, that padlock effect, I do show you in the live how to make a padlock kind of style from square dies. But if you have, oh, I've already used it, here it is. This is another one. This is a Simply Made Crafts Treat Box Edition set. So it does go with the treat box. This is an add-on, but there's the padlock. You would have seen me use that on the treasure chest and on other projects, and I've already made that there, and it's, it's fab. But all I'm gonna do is just snip across this piece here to you know make it so that it kind of works. Okay, so that's just some of the dies that I have used, but you can make this, and many people have shared, there are amazing versions of this already over on Mixed Up Crafters, and some of them have used no dies at all, and they look amazing. Okay, so, but I'd just like to show you those bits that you can use if you do have them. So, this is the die that I used, and it was, um, sorry, the embossing folder, and I would forgot who it was by, and then a few of the people looked, and it was by Creative from Craft Stash. So, I don't know if it's still available. As always, everything will be linked below, but any kind of, you know, animal print effects, or you could just have, you know, polka dots, all sorts. And it's a great way to show you how I use a small embossing folder to cover a larger area, because the join is actually underneath this piece here, which looks like it's part of the faux leather effect that we're trying to get there. Okay, so it looks like you need every bit here, but you don't, <laughs> because I have changed a few things along the way. And that's that die there, you can see as well. So I also have some key dies. I just thought I'd show those. So other ideas, and just layer them up. Put a few layers together on the padlock there. There's about three or four layers of cardstock in between, all fun foam, just to give it a little bit of dimension. And I actually put a piece of black card behind that top layer because it's obviously quite dark when you look inside a padlock. So what we do is we get rid of all of these pieces here. Okay, so first of all, to make the gift bag, which is a really nice size gift bag on its own, but you'll want two pieces of cardstock that are eight and a quarter by 11. Okay, mine's coming just under there, but it should be eight and a quarter by 11. Let's just check that that one is there as well. Yeah, okay. And along the eight and a quarter side, you want to score at seven and three quarters. Okay, all the way down. Okay, all the way down there. And then along the 11 inch side, you want to score at 
four inches. I'm just going to move that up because I think I've cut that slightly short. But anyway, along that 11 inch side, you want to score it four. You want to do that on both pieces, but if you want it to fold flat, you'll see on this one here, again, along that 11 inch side, I've scored it four, but you also want to score it six, but just on one of them. Okay, and this is going to be the piece that is going to be the, for the back, and that it's that basically that we've just made, that score line there. Okay, so that's those two pieces. If you want to now go ahead, fold and burnish, and you'll see there you're just removing, you'll have this rectangle here. Just remove that little bottom right hand corner, and then just take a little wedge off of the tops and the bottoms there of that tab, and that would just allow us to just pop it all together nicely and we won't have anything overhanging. Then these are the side pieces, I've already gone ahead and cut this one to how we want it, but this is how you will start off. So you want a piece of four and a half by 11, okay? And along the 11 inch side, you want to score at four, and again, if you want it to fold flat, you want to score at six as well. And then along the four and a half side, you want to score at two inches just down to that first score line, and then at four, uh, yeah, at four all the way down. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the scoreboard for a moment. And then what we want to do is, again, those of you familiar with your fold flat, you want to work within this rectangle here, ignore this piece, it's just within this rectangle, and you're going to do a score line from the bottom here down to the, the, this score line corner, and then down there. And you can see that's what you want to do. So it's all within that rectangle. So I'm just going to grab my metal ruler and my stylus. Make sure you've got a soft surface and you're just going to score within that section there. Okay, and then again, fold and burnish all of your score lines. I'm using the Tonic Studio cardstock. This is their 12 by 12. And this is 216 GSM, I think it is. So it's a nice weight and you can obviously, you know, by the time we add those embossed bits to the front and stick it all together, it ends up becoming quite a strong little gift bag or a display bag as this one's going to be. Well, not this one now because this one will be for somebody um, and eventually I do. I mean, I keep them on display, I enjoy them for a while and then, you know, I end up then giving it to somebody when I find the right gift. I tend to find gifts to, to match the size of the gift bags rather than the other way around. Okay, so you will have two pieces now that look like that. And you'll see you want to create a valley fold with that centre score line and these triangle score lines will all be valley folds as well. That's a mountain fold, mountain fold. And you can just, you know, fold it each way. You'll see how that's all going to fold flat. Okay, so get all of that ready. Okay, so next we're going to start putting it together. Now, you may want, to, a lot of you will just watch this video first of all anyway, but these pieces here, you'll see I've got them attached onto this piece. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them behind the embossing folder, because you'll see the embossing folder is stuck on top here. But you can also attach it into the join of the gift bag. So once I give the measurements of how far down I'm sticking this and everything, you may want to stick that piece in here before you stick it to this side. So you'll have that strap, if I just use this for example, coming out of here and wrapping around the front. But I'm going to do it on the embossed folder, so that section, sorry. So, But even if you're using pattern paper, you could pop it behind the pattern paper, okay? Which I think most people will probably do, but I just want to throw that in there now in case some of you do think, oh, well, actually, I'd rather put it behind this piece. So this is the front because it hasn't got that score line. You can start with the back if you want, but I'm just going to add my glue. I'm using the Kalel for pretty much all of this because it's nice and strong. And then I'm going to just lay that down. Mine might poke, oh no, it's perfect. I thought one of my measurements of the card was a bit off. But you're just going to stick that down. And again, as always, make sure that base score line there stays nice and lined up. Everything else, you can always trim the top. So I'm just going to stick that one there. And then you want to get your next back piece here. And I'm going to add some more glue along here while that other side is drying. So just all the way down and then just lay that one down on there. Yeah, see this one's come up a bit higher. Although now when I bring it down, it seems to be okay. I don't know. <laughs> there we go, it is okay. It looked different on my scoreboard. Anyway, so now that's that one. And then you can flip the whole thing over, fold that one. And then we're gonna add glue to this tab here. 
and then fold that one over and then pop your glue on this one and then just fold that one right over and it should all join up perfectly and fold flat. Just burnish anything if you feel it needs to be reworked at all. Get rid of all that glue. And now you can start to see how we've got our gift bag coming together. So I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to stick the back one down first. So that's where we've got that score line, that extra one there. So that's going to go in first of all. And then if you want to reinforce it, now's the time. So if you are thinking of putting something a bit heavier in there, So you would have seen there, I just added the glue to both the sides, so the back first, then the sides, and then you finish with that front, so you get that nice flow of the cardstock wrapping around there. Right, that's what you want, and then you can also test the fold flat, so if you push in here, put your fingers above the triangles on each side, and just push in, and as you do, push that back score line, I think I forgot to burnish it, but it's fine, but there you can see, so I you know, check that all now because you don't want to get all that done and then realise that the bag doesn't fold flat. You'll see there. So these again, perfect for storing away. So I'm going to keep it flat because it's a bit easier to work. So now I'm just going to check all these pieces. So I think I did change a few of the sizes along the way. So again, you know, change them if you feel you need to. But basically I've gone ahead and just embossed, again using that embossing folder I showed you before, two pieces of the same colour cardstock. I just liked that whole tone on tone effect and then just used the gold mirrored card or the silver mirrored card. But these are three and three quarters by six and a half and you want two of them. And then I have got a strip, which I think I need to trim, or I know I hadn't done it yet, sorry. So I'm gonna just trim up. Yeah, I've got some scrap here. So let's just see, I done a quarter of an inch. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to move that down a quarter of an inch and I layered up a few on top of each other. So I'm going to do three, just so you've got that kind of, you know, thick faux leather kind of trim. Okay, so next we're going to stick that down on here and this is going to go through the middle. Okay, you can see like so. Now if you want to trim this so it's the same height as the embossed pieces, you can, but I'm keeping mine to the full height of the actual bag itself. So I don't think I gave the length, so they were a quarter of an inch by seven. But again, there's lots of parts of this that you can just change along the way. If you haven't joined the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page, head over there because there's lots and lots of you know great inspiration on ways that people have changed these up a little. So next I want to create this bit, so this is where I'm changing it slightly now on this video. So you see I've got these strips here, so I need to extend these strips by, so you want to do these to five and a half, but we can trim these even when they are stuck on there. So I'm going to do five and a half by three quarters of an inch. So that one. And you just want to score each one at half an inch along the long side there. Again, if you want to make these thicker, you can do, but I think that's quite a nice width to have them. So, what we want to do now is, and this is where you'll have to make sure that you stick these, or they are the same measurement as mine, if not, you're going to have to change them up a bit. But I'm bringing it so that it has a equal, so if I put them together, okay, you're going to butt both pieces up together, and you want to bring it down. They have, you know, it's a very, very thin border. You know, there isn't kind of much there really. But so I've got it so that I have at the top there, it's like one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's where I'm going to be sticking it. So then these pieces you want to stick behind that. You see there? And for these here, you want to stick it so that the top is one and a quarter from the top. So the top of this strip is one and a quarter, so I can come down even more from the top. There we go. That's where I'm going to be sticking that one there. So I'm going to keep that pinched on there, open up this back piece and just pop a little bit of glue on the back there and fold that one over. And then I'm going to add glue to all of this and I'm going to get this one stuck down now because then I can, you know, line up that other piece against it. Okay, so just bring that down here. And again, I'm just going to check that that whole bit there is one and a quarter. 
Yep, I'm happy with that. Make sure it's nice and straight as well so it runs parallel with the top there. Okay, and then this side you just need to match it up really. You don't need to worry about um, measuring with your ruler. You just want to line it up. So I'm going to stick it with this one here and I've got wiggle room with this Kalau. I'm just going to pretend to stick the whole piece down. So butt it up to that other bit and then I can just lay this down flat and I can just move that piece until it lays nice and flat with that one there. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, that's bang on. Like so. So again, I can flip this over now and just go over and stick all of that down. I've got all kind of levels, I guess, of gift bags. I've got really, really simple ones. I've got ones that are a little bit more complex with lots of elements, a bit like this one here. So you can take bits from all of them. So I know lots of people like to, you know, look through the playlist and kind of take something from one and use it with the other one and change it up again. These are just all ideas, but I think it's a great um, designer bag style. Really, really fun because it's, you know, it's still practical in the sense that you just have that nice space inside but on the outside you've got all this detail. Now we have those pieces attached there and I just think it's going to help keep this piece a bit flatter because you can see these kind of bounce up a bit. When that's all in there it's not so bad but I just think by doing it that way, yeah, anyway. Now with this piece here I'm going to add my glue all along that trim. I'm just laying this down right through the centre there. And make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, next we want to stick the handles down because we actually do this last because everybody, you know, you might put your handles just slightly differently to, you know, where I've positioned them. Yours might come down slightly, you know, more than mine. So by sticking your handles down first, we can then kind of work this piece around how you've done your handles. So I've got one done here and I've done this using a piece. I'm just going to check because, again, my measurement when I done the live was, a, was slightly different. So this is a piece of one inch, okay, by... 12 inches. You can have it shorter if you want, so don't worry, you know, use the longest length cardstock that you have. And you want to come down one and a half inches first. So, you know, along the one inch side, you're going to score at half an inch, but you're going to start scoring at one and a half inches down. You see there that score line doesn't start from the top. Start it at one and a half all the way down so that you finish with one and a half left at that end. So it depends on what length you use. So for me, I started from one and a half and so here I started from one and a half and scored to ten and a half. OK, and then I'm going to grab my corner punch and I'm just going to punch the corners at each end there. Just, to, you know, just for a bit of interest, really, you don't have to do it, but you'll see there I've got that curved effect. And then you just want to burnish the score line and pinch from the very end all the way along until the other end of the score line. And when you get to the end of the score line, pinch it and you'll start to see you get like a triangle effect. Follow that and just push that against your finger. So you get that effect. You see there what we've got. So again, I'll show you this end here. So just pinch it right up to the end of the score line and then just push that against, you know, back against your fingers. And then just pinch the sides. And there again, you'll have that effect. Okay, so you can glue them through the middle. I actually didn't. Um, I find that once you just kind of curve this part here, it will stay in that shape. And when you st stuck the front pieces down, that handle's not going to come apart. So if you would rather glue it, you can, but I don't think you really need to. Okay, so that's what you should have, two handles. All right, now we need to stick those down. So I'm going to stick this one here and this one here, like so. Now, let's just see how far down I came. So you'll see there the bottom of the handle is at one and a half inches. Okay, so that's what you want to kind of do. And I came in two inches. Bang on. So I'm going to grab my ruler. I'm going to see where two inches is. So there. So that's where that piece needs to be. And then I want the bottom to be at one and a half. So I can just pull that down a little bit more. One and a half. There you go. That's bang on there. So I'm just going to grab a pencil. And I'm going to put a very light pencil mark just a little bit above there. And then I know now I can just add my glue to this. 
I can't go all the way up in there, just cover most of that. And then I'm just going to sit that back down, just covering that pencil now, like so. And then with this one here again, I just want to come in two inches. So I'm going to pop a pencil there. This time I just need to lay it down so it's next to that one. So I'm just going to pop a bit of glue on the back. Lines up with the one next to it and just hold those two in place for a minute. Okay, and then you want to do the same with the back. And this time you can just pop your glue. And you can also put the embossing folders and everything on the back as well. I haven't. And then you just want to sit this. So if you pop it inside that one, and then you can just kind of lay down the handles. Okay, so I'm really pleased with that. That looks great. Next, okay, so next we need to make the flap. So this is a piece of seven and three quarters by three and a half. Along the three and a half side, you just want to score at half an inch. Okay, so get rid of the scoreboard. And then if you just fold and burnish, like so. Okay, now this is where everybody's may vary ever so slightly. Okay, but you can see here what we want to achieve. So there is that piece coming over. I think I've done this one slightly longer for the minute because again, we can always trim this before we stick it down. But you'll see there how this looks. Now what you want to do is you want to create two circles. So this is where I said your circle dies will come in handy. And I actually took the smallest circle here. Okay, and this one measures from cut to cut. You're looking at three quarters of an inch. Okay, so you want to do your circle you want to measure from the, the point of this triangle here, okay? So to the outer part here. So it's two, two and a half will be okay for me, two and a half in, okay? And you're looking at, well, mine's a little bit higher on this one, but I can still do half an inch down, okay? So I'm going to lay my ruler down on here along that score line, okay? And just with a pencil, I'm going to come in two and a half inches I'm quite okay, I think my camera let's just move there we go so two and a half just going to put a light pencil mark there and then just work just bring my ruler along to any point there but just so I can see so one two two and a half little pencil mark there and then from that pencil mark I'm going to come down half an inch so just about there and again just about oh just about there Okay, and that is now where I want to do my circle. Okay, now I, I, in the live I said you want to make sure that you have that dot in the center of your circle, but I'm going to have, I'm going to be coming too close to that score line. So I'm going to bring my down a little bit. It's still going to work. So I'm going to bring it down. The pencil mark, if I just hold this up, it's just kind of there. Can you see? There's that two and a half inch pencil mark just there. So I'm bringing mine down just a little bit more because I don't want that, um, yeah, probably maybe could have brought them down a little bit more. I mean, it is about the same actually. No, I think it will be fine because it is the same measurements. But anyway, I'm going to just bring that down just a little bit like so. About there. And I'm just going to run that through my die machine. Okay, so I've just done those two. Get rid of that. Just rubbing out those two pencil marks that you can still kind of see. Next we want to do some cutting. Now if you want to do, you know, line this up so you get a perfectly straight line, you're going to cut straight up like this. Okay, and again, that one there. And then you want to take a little bit more off each side. So can you see here where we've removed about a quarter of an inch? But you don't just want to take quarter of an inch from, say, the left. You've got to do a little bit from each side. So I'm going to take, you know, like one eighth of an inch that side, and then one eighth of an inch that side. So now I've got that quarter inch. So again, once you've laid this on top, if you want to then bring this up a bit, like I said, we can still trim that right, you know, before. So now we've got that. Next we want to create this kind of section here and I think I just came in one inch. Is it one inch? No, maybe three quarters. Three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to put a pencil mark at three quarters of an inch 
and another one there, three quarters of an inch. And I came up one and a half, but this is half an inch longer, so you want to come up two inches. So on the side, two inches, and on this side, two inches. And then again, I've done this freehand, so I'm just going to cut up to that pencil mark, like so. And then I'm just going to cut across, like that. So again, I'm just cutting up to that pencil mark, and then just cut across, like so. I'm just straighten that one off a bit. But again, if you want to use a ruler and everything, then you can do like that. Okay. Now you can bring it over onto your bag and you should be able to just pop this behind there because you've only put your glue on these bits here and then feed all this through like so. And you'll see now how that all closes. So if you're happy with the length, you know, of how far down this comes, then you can keep it as it is, because I actually quite like that as it is. So I'm going to keep mine at the three and a half. But if you want to trim this, bring it up a bit more, you can. I'm also going to just take corner off of that one there and that one there. And now we can get this one stuck down. So I'm just going to bring in this glue, because this has just got a quick grab. I'm just going to pop that all along the back here and then I'm just going to lay that one down on the back here. Just line up that score line with the top of the bag and that will all come over and it's supposed to be like curved and everything that is the look okay so again there you can see it's all got that kind of bounce to it so don't you know don't think you're doing it wrong because it's again it's all how to make it look like that designer handbag you see there how it all comes together now we just want to add the hardware effect so this is where I've used the square dies and I've used this one here and this one measures it's about one and one eighth squared and I'm just going to use up a bit of my scrap here and then I'm going to cut a hole in the centre. Again, if you want to measure it properly, you can, but I'm just going to, as I do with most things, just eyeball it. There we go. That'll do. And then again, using some more scrap here, I'm going to cut, let's see what bit I can use. I can use this bit down here. Just trim this out, because I'm going to cut it a little bit thinner. Basically, I want to cut this thin enough so it's going to come through that hole there. Now, if you want to make that hole a bit bigger, if you've got another die, something that, you know, will work, then, you know, do do that. But I'm going to trim this. So it's about just over maybe one eighth of an inch. It's quite a thin piece. And the length of this is, just for a minute, you're going to cut it down. It's about two and a half. Just curl it like so. I mean, actually, you end up kind of really folding it, so don't worry. But just fold it in half. See, now mine's not fitting through, so I need to trim that even more. So I'm going to keep it folded in half. Use these ones now. And this is the where that piece from that Simply Made Crafts, they have it already done for you. But I'm just showing you how you can make it as well. And then, now, that fits through there perfectly. Can you see? Now, I'm going to just snip some off like so. And then I'm going to use this glue, just pop a blob on each side. And then just like a brad or a split pin, I'm just going to split open the sides, making sure that you've got enough sticking out this side here. Now if I just open that up, you've got that piece. Just rub off any glue there. You See how you get that effect? It's really cool. And now we can stick that one into the center of this piece here. So again, I'm just gonna use this glue here. It's nice and strong. And you wanna stick this just in the center, I guess about half an inch up from the bottom. You wanna make sure that when this lays down, it's this, these strips are gonna sit through the center of that piece there. Okay, so you might need to move yours up a bit more, but I can see there, that's gonna fall through so it hits on that piece because we're going to put holes in this in a minute. 
Okay, then I've got these two pieces here, which are three quarters of an inch by one and three quarters, and they're going to stick on the ends here. But again, you might want to trim these pieces. This is why there's a lot of like changes. So let me just pop that one on there. Yeah, see, because I want that to sit so it sits equally over each side of that silver square underneath. So I'm going to just trim mine up like so. And then this one underneath, I think I can just trim up a little bit. I've taken about a quarter of an inch off of each end, okay? And then I'm going to grab my glue here. I'm going to hole punch through both pieces. It's a bit easier that way. And then I'm going to just pop that one on the end there. We're going to add those other little bits on in a minute, but we can do them right at the end. So now, you'll see they sit over the top perfectly, okay? Again, if you want to go longer, you can. Now, I'm going to look underneath here. It's hard for you to see, but if you look underneath, you can see where that hole punch is. You just want to kind of, you know, mirror that through that piece there. But it is bang on. It's in the centre. So, again, I'm looking at, um, well, that's one and three quarters. Or, oh, that's seven eighths. It's as near on as you can get. But, again, you know, just follow what I'm doing, but just adapt it to, to yours. So, so I'm just going to punch that one, okay, and then I'm going to lay it on this one here and just put a pencil mark in the middle, just a little mark on the mirror card there and just do that one. And now what will happen is you'll be able to slide that piece, just kind of fold it off like so through that one and then through that one and you get that lock can you see so there's a process to get to it but it looks amazing when you've done it um, so now let me grab my padlock and I can just snip right along the bottom there like so and now that padlock will sit perfectly just open up that piece like so doesn't that look good? And we need to put a Velcro dot. If you want to use magnets, you can. I always say it though, I don't tend to use them in gift bags. I don't really think you need to. So I'm just going to take a pair off here. They're very, very sticky. And I'm just going to sit it, I mean, open it all up if you'd rather, but I'm just going to sit it behind that square, like so, and then I can just push that right down, like so. Okay, like this. Now we just want to add all the other little kind of details, really. So. You want to do your circles there, so I'll just show you how this one looks if you would rather. Okay, so you just die cut it and then I just cut it in half, but it's got to cut through it already for you to actually fold on a more of a 3D project, but because this is a fold flat, it wouldn't really work. I'm then also going to cut these thin strips here. Okay, there again, they're about one eighth just over by the three quarters of an inch there, and I'm just going to put one there and there. And then I'm going to do this piece, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute with your key underneath it um, with the ribbon. And then you're, you're done. Okay, so I've done all of those extras there, but I need to find a scrap piece of silver mirror cardstock to do this one here. I don't want to cut into a whole piece just for that. So now we just want to finish off with that key piece. So what I have here is two circles, the same one that I used for the circles up here. And then this larger one is three and a quarter. And you want to sit that right in the center. Try and get it as centered as possible. You don't end up using all of this. So you can use it if you're making quite a few of these bags. So like so. And then I'm just going to join it there, just so they stay kind of together. So I'm just going to run that through my machine. OK, so just take all that apart. So that's what you will have. But then you just want to, so now you just want to cut kind of a, a segment. So I'd say maybe quarter. You, I don't even think you need all that. So I'm just going to cut like that much away there. So I guess if I measure it from point to point, it's two and a half. Okay, what I've cut away there. And I'm just going to, again, just curl it because it just helps. And then I'm just going to grab my glue, pop a bit along there, and just wrap it until it kind of joins. You don't want to make that hole too small because you will put ribbon through it or some twine, whatever's going to work, but like so. You see that? You make a little, I said like a little skirt, wasn't it? Like a, for like um, stick people <laughs> or a little dress or something, but 
you can now, when you've folded it in half, when you've stuck it, you can actually fold it flat and, you know, make creases in it. Can you see there? I've just wrapped it around. And now you should have that kind of hole at the top there where we'll be able to put our ribbon through. See there? That one's actually a bit wider, so maybe cut a bit bigger if you want to play around. I mean, you've got enough now there. You could cut this one a bit bigger. Again, kind of put that shape into it and bring that one around. You see there, you've got a bigger hole. So it's entirely up to you. And that one there is three inches. Okay, so just play around, then you've got a smaller one there again as well. So I've just had a look through my keys and I don't have any that are silver because I've got a lot of old keys. The only silver one I've got is this dinky one, but I think it's a bit too small. But because it's going to go in here, so that one actually sticks out the bottom, so maybe I will have to go for that. It's purely decorative, I'm not, you know, too worried. But you can see there, or I could use that die cut one if I wanted to, but then I think that's going to be a bit too big as well. I'm actually tempted to use that three inch one that I shared. Let's just do this one. Because that way I can actually get in a bigger key. Yeah. And then I could put that one inside there. Because you're not really going to see it, but then it is in there, you know. So I think I'm going to go for that one. So have a look at the keys that you've got. Like I said, it's not the, the best colours. And then I've gone for this silver grey ribbon. I went for the same colour there, but I don't have anything this teal colour. But again, if I really wanted to, I could change this up again. But I'm going to thread that through and then I'm going to trim the top there and then I'm going to thread this through here and then the whole key should disappear oh, inside like so. Okay so you have something like that and then I just with some hot glue stuck it behind, in fact I need to trim it a bit more because I don't want it all hanging down like that, about there. So I'm just going to stick these two together. I've just put my hot glue on and then that will go just behind the lid there the flap there like so and then if you want you can put some more ribbon around that piece there as well and I just attach that so in fact I could just probably put that bit there you might not want to put anything on the padlock and then just I attach that piece inside there and just put a bit of glue behind the padlock piece as well like so so it'd be something like that so it's entirely up to you what you want to do with that piece there and there's the finished bag. I just need to add them there, but it just shows you don't have to have them there either. You know, it does look nice without. It will all open up. But I do think I like the way that this is all kind of held under the straps there rather than just slightly lifted there. But that still does look nice as well. So it's entirely up to you how you decide to make the gift bag. Hopefully I've given you lots of inspiration along the way and ideas, you know, just different ways that you can kind of change yours up. I love the way that it does really close with that padlock and that whoever has this has to physically open all of those elements to get into the bag or just rip it apart. But I don't really want them to do that with this one. I'm usually pretty fine with that kind of thing. Just like go for it, get into your gift. But this one, no, I'd like them to keep it a little bit longer. But anyway, there you have it, really fun. As always, I'll share all the links and the measurements will be over on my blog and I'll be back very soon with another fun tutorial. See you then, bye.